In order to access the Spectrum Analyzer features on the Yellow Jacket tablet, you simply depress the button that's labeled Spectrum Analysis, and it switches the mode of the receiver from a Wi-Fi packet demodulating receiver to a Spectrum Analyzer for the RF only. Um, this particular screen will come up with a pop-up which allows you to vary certain parameters of the Spectrum Analyzer. You can think of a Spectrum Analyzer basically as uh, a sheet of graph paper, the x-axis is the frequency uh, from low frequency to high frequency. The y-axis is radio frequency energy and dBm, and it's marked off from uh, low energy to high energy. So basically, as you sweep through the frequencies, the instrument makes a measurement of the energy at that frequency and paints a trace across the screen. Uh, the frequency resolution is the smallest slice as the instrument steps through the frequency sweep from low frequency to high frequency. So you can either take a very fine slice as you step across, which enhances the resolution of the trace that's drawn, or you can take a larger step across, which increases the speed that you traverse the span of frequencies that you want to scan, but it comes at a cost of a decrease in the resolution of the image that's displayed. The, uh, the reference level in dBm, and in technical terms dBm is one milliwatt into a 50 ohm RF load is referenced to zero dBm. And so here you see negative numbers. And it's negative number because of course, these signals aren't wired that we're measuring. They're wireless. They're through the air signals. And so as soon as we disconnect from the node and use an antenna element to measure the signal that's being radiated at that point, the signal level falls off dramatically. But uh, let's measure uh, a few channels here and, and look for some energy. If I tap presets in here, you'll notice I could select from 802.11bg, or if I drop that down, 802.11a. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll leave it 802.11bg for the moment. And now if I drop down the other menu, if I select all, it will scan through all 14 channels for 802.11bg. If I pull a number, it will scan through only that portion of the spectrum where that channel occupies. And over in the right hand side of that display you'll see trigger mode settings and delay. What we need to do is we need to set a trigger level so that once that trigger level is broken, that is to say once the signal level comes up above that set point it will synchronize the trace on the display. Um, I'm going to pick a value of negative uh, 70 dBm here, just out of experience with what these levels are, are here in the building. And then we'll enter that and we'll see how the trace behaves. Once we have a uh, trace on the display of the spectrum analyzer, uh, there's a few other things we can do that we can find under this selection here called trace settings. Once the peak hold is checked off, wherever the spectrum analyzer sees activity, trace over trace, is also coded in the other color and it's retained. And so what will happen with a frequency hopper here for this example is you'll start to notice how that entire portion of the spectrum gets filled in by wherever the frequency hopper will register. And so given time, if we let a minute or so go by, there won't be any space in this entire 22 megahertz worth of spectrum where this frequency hopper hasn't been. And so that's why um, when it presents itself as interference across a number of channels, none of those channels may be free and clear of registering energy as interference from a frequency hopper like this. You select it by depressing the first marker and then you simply transfer it to some area of the screen where you want to register the marker. 
So let's say I drop that marker here. And what will happen is it will ride either the uh, active trace, the peak trace, or an average trace. Right now it's riding on the active trace. I'll take this window out. You can see that uh, red triangle, which won't move in position. It's simply riding up and down with the energy. But of note, right above it will be the frequency that that marker is registered to and the signal strength that that marker is going and registering trace over trace. We're now going to concentrate on this area here in the middle, which is averaging and smoothing. And what that'll do is there are two types of averaging. There's an average where it's called multiple traces over the same frequency bin, that same exact position. Or the secondary type of averaging is a side-to-side -side averaging, which basically smooths by looking at frequencies to the left and right within a certain resolution bandwidth width. Let me show you the difference between the two. What happens is it starts to color code the activity here in time. All right, from 0 to 100 samples. Basically, from this point down, I've got that traditional display that we saw before. But what I have up on top of it is a heat map. And what this represents is that the lower power areas are cooler colors, the blues, the yellows, and the greens. Those areas of the spectrogram that are more intense, a higher amplitude, are shaded, the reds and the oranges and the white hots. That's just so now what this is showing me is on a percentage scale of 0 to 100 percent, how many times does this particular signal hit 100 um, percent? Basically, I've set the threshold to negative 70, so any time the threshold breaks through negative uh, 70, that will register 100 percent. Another neat feature called interference assist on here, which is basically a slideshow. And uh, it is going to take you through a variety of displays and associate their characteristics with peculiar devices that generate that kind of a signal. You can call this up any time that you're using the spectrum analyzer. And you can navigate using the previous and next buttons down at the bottom. Uh, in this case, this is representing a narrow band uh, FM transmitter.